Hello friends. Today I am going to uh, do a different type of a session. Uh, it is not going to be anything related to engineering circuit analysis, but I thought because now is the time where exams are starting to uh, come up, various competitive exams. So I thought I will just give you a general idea on how to prepare for competitive exams. This will not be specific for a particular exam. Maybe in the future I will do uh, specific videos for specific exams, but this is going to be a general outlook. All right. So let us begin. Now, who is my target audience for this particular sessions? All right. Now, my main uh, target audience here will be students of B Tech or B. All right. People who are doing their B Tech, maybe third year or fourth year people, people who are preparing for GATE or people who are in the fourth year who want a job, a government job, uh, who are going to prepare for competitive exams like GATE or maybe BRC or NPCL or ECL. All these people who just want to get the job just after the BTEC fourth year. All right. Now, the next set of people are working professionals. Working professionals in the sense people who have started to work maybe one or two years are already over and who needs a change from their job because most of the people from electrical or mechanical or chemical, even civil engineering people, some people are working in the software industry. That is not their core industry. Maybe they want to come out of that and they want to prepare for a competitive exam so that they can. Uh, get some work in which they have been trained for the past four years. All right. So these two people, these two are my the are the target audience for this particular session. And people who want to see this for general motivation, they are welcome to see this. This is not restricted to these two people, but these are the main target audience. All right. Now, <coughs> before starting or uh, understanding anything about uh, what I'm going to say. The preface what I want to say is that the entire session can be summed up by telling that the only way to succeed is hard work and smart thinking. These two topics I will be elaborating in a much later session, but you have to understand that in this competitive world where almost everybody is having neck to neck competition, the only way to succeed is to do pure hard work and also smart thinking. In competitive exams, smart thinking is going to be very, 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 very important. All right. Now. Before starting all these things, I want to do a little bit myth buster action here. All right. So there are many myths surrounding competitive exams. All right. Let us see some of them. Okay. Now, some of the myths I have put a topic here. Now, myth number one is that you cannot clear the interview. So some people have already assumed that they can clear the competitive exam, the written part. And the thing is that you cannot clear the interview. Now, why do they think like that? They tell that India is corrupt, people is corrupt, people who are recruiting are corrupt, they will take their own people, their own relatives, uh, their own friends. So people think like that, people are corrupt. Now I would like to tell my own example here. Uh, I had written a couple of competitive exams and I cleared them also and I was writing this one particular exam, I was in Hyderabad at that time, I was writing this Coal India exam. So I, I was outside this examination hall before the exam was starting, I was speaking to a guy, I had almost, I had passed out from my college, it was almost two years. And this guy was a fresher. Now I told him, we were discussing and I told him that I had recently cleared the NPCIL uh, test and uh, the ECIL test also. So he told that uh, even without thinking, he told he will fail. Usually these people fail in the medical test. <laughs> I got astonished actually here. Uh, I asked, have you cleared, have you had any experience like that, that you were rejected due to the medical reasons? He told, no, no, I am just fourth year. I have heard this. Uh, See, uh, what happens after the exam, you need not bother now. Basically, what you are going to do now is you are going to prepare for the exam, right? So you first clear the exam and later if some problem is there, we will tackle it then, right? So don't uh, be lethargic just because somebody has told you that there is corruption. And in fact, I don't think there is a lot of malpractices going on. In fact, uh, I personally am working in a government uh, organization. Uh, I have not, I do not have distant relatives also in my organization. All right. <laughs> leave, uh, leave alone my father or mother. There are not even distant relations. And people who have got the training with me in my job, even they do not have any distant relatives. So this all uh, negative thoughts, please leave aside. All right. So you first clear the exam. That is the most important priority, right? You clear the exam. So that's what I told that guy also. 
see you just write the exam right and you try to clear that you reach that particular level and rest of the thing we can see that is not our priority now all right so this is the first myth that you cannot clear the interview or you cannot clear the test you first clear the test interview session we can see later all right the next myth what people in general tell is fear is bad all right fear, fear is very bad thing you should not have fear uh, if you have fear you will not able to be able to perform all right so for that let me just uh, take few things here now air flow is always from high pressure to low pressure all right current flow is always from high potential to low potential conventional current flow first and third one is the thermal flow is always from a higher temperature to lower temperature so even nature is designed in such a way that unless you have a depression or something which is low nature itself won't work air won't flow current won't flow there is no thermal flow therefore don't think that fear is a bad thing in fact fear is a good thing you have a fear for something you will try to overcome it all right so you will work more so that you need not have this uh, tension in the last minute all right so in a way fear is good it drives you forward and no one explains it much better than the old man in the movie dark knight rises all right you might remember this scene in which batman is trying to jump over a ledge with a rope in his uh, particular in, in the rope in his <coughs> waist and he's not able to jump all right then this old person this old man asks him why do you think that uh, you are not able to jump all right the batman replies something and ultimately the conversation comes to a point that where batman tells that i'm not scared of death when the old man says well that's why you are failing you should be scared of death and that fear of death is only crave uh, you to have a better life crave for living comes from the fear of death now i am not telling that you should be always fear, uh, fearful <laughs> you should not be, you should be always scared of something okay see fear at till one point is good but if you have too much of fear the problem is that you will have so much of tension that it will start affecting your body even before the exam you will start having nausea you will have loose motions and when you see the exam paper you might faint that level of fear is not good all right that level of fear is never good all right now then how to lessen this fear okay in case you are having more fear how can you lessen this fear there are only basically two reasons how you can do this okay one is to study really well okay the more you are having the preparation the less you are going to have fear right you will be more confident a little bit of fear will be there before the exam but that fear is good that is going to drive you forward to clear the exam properly so study well for your exams and another thing is that you have to do a lot of mock tests see when you are writing an exam you are in a, a new surrounding you are not inside your room you are with a lot of people you are going to feel the competition you are going to feel the heat so it is better to do a lot of mock tests and especially nowadays there are a lot of coaching on institute institutes offering a lot of mock tests so in case you are preparing for a competitive exam <coughs> during the last one or two months make sure that you en enroll in mock tests so that you will get a feel of writing this exam all right so these are the only two ways how you can lessen your fear <coughs> there might be other methods but these two things if you do you are going to have very less fear and that fear is useful for you all right now <coughs> what is the actual preparation what you have to do okay what is the actual preparation strategy all right so let us go for what you have to do when preparing for a competitive exam first thing you have to do is to get hold of the syllabus whatever exam you are going to write make sure you have a copy of syllabus all right if you are going to write gate gate has a beautiful syllabus all right it has a well defined syllabus which are prepared by really really great people all right so get hold of the syllabus okay so gate gate is the best thing to prepare all right because if you prepare for gate your level will be so high that you will be able to clear any competitive exam all right any technical competitive exam so gate exam the syllabus is going to be a very important uh, component all right now after getting the syllabus uh, even for ies exam they have a good syllabus you can go through that also so in case a competitive exam has defined their own syllabus you get hold of that stick it in your room and as you complete the portions you tick every portion which you are going to complete so finally if you complete 80% of the syllabus you will feel good you have stuck the syllabus on your wall all right and you have covered a lot of topics and that will give you a good feeling all right now next thing i would like to take little thing from my mtech all right so in mtech basically we have a first session first few months we do for literature survey 
same thing you have to do when you are going to prepare for a competitive exam you have to have a proper literature survey okay what do i mean by literature survey okay by literature survey what i mean is that you should have a collection of books a very good standard books that you can ask from any person <coughs> who has cleared the competitive exam or your teachers or your friends all right who are good with the subject so make sure that you have a collection of standard books now standard books are not only enough because based on the syllabus there might be some topics which are not important so another good material which you can collect are standard material preferably from a good coaching institute you purchase that material because in coaching institute they have specific uh, syllabus based on gate or ies and you will have all those topics neatly written and you'll have a lot of problems to practice so make sure that you have a good set of standard material as well all right and make sure if you are going to prepare for any competitive exam you have the previous year gate and ies objective question papers and solve them to your heart's content because sometimes the question might get repeated also and once you do gate and ies problems on your own you are going to be the master of the subject all right and of course you should have your own material your own notes that is also going to help you a lot now the next thing is usually the study timings what time i should study all right now students and working professionals they are always engaged from 9 to 5 all right so they cannot do anything there other than their break what they get in between so the best time to study is from morning 5 to 8 am all right you study from morning 5 to 8 am and evening spend one hour and revise whatever you have learned in the morning now i used to have a tuition teacher who was called srimati she used to always take geometry and we had to come to the tuition at five o'clock in the morning because she used to tell that your brain must not be stressed while you are going to study difficult things so geometry in that time was a bit difficult subject so your brain should be clear right the brain should not have any tension because as the day goes you will have a lot of tension and you'll be tired and if you learn all these things in the tired mood you will not be able to understand you will not be able to appreciate the beauty of the subject therefore she always used to call us in the morning 5 a.m to 6 a.m used to be the geometry class similarly the best time to study is 5 a.m to 8 a.m the golden hours but in case you are a uh, you like to study late nights personally i also used to study in the late nights that is well and good so you adjust your syllabus in such way some people like to study after 12 o'clock in the night that is also a peaceful time but uh, what I suggest is that you don't try to change your schedule. If you study in the night, continue like that. If you study in the morning, you continue like that. All right. But however, the good time is from 5 a.m. to 8 a.m. when your uh, brain is fully fresh. Now, <coughs> aspirants who are who have already started preparing for GATE, who are dedicating their time for GATE and IES for other competitive exams, you can study in the morning hours fully. So you are having ample time. And before uh, going to bed or in the evening time, make sure you have revised the subjects which you have gone through and in the previous days and the same day also okay so you go through you revise revision is going to be very very important in competitive exams because if you don't revise you are not going to remember anything all right now what is the importance of this revision all right revision is a very important thing you have to go through the topics which you have learned earlier now in tony buzan's book the mind map that is an interesting graph i have drawn this on my own here on the y-axis there is the recall graph that means you are trying to recollect all right and the x-axis is the time after learning you might be able to recall almost 90 percentage of the thing which you have learned after 10 minutes all right but you see the graph it is gradually decaying in fact it is decaying at a very fast rate all right so this is a graph if you don't do revision in one day you will be uh, i maybe forgot about 60 percentage or 70 percentage you'll be able to recall only 70 percentage or 60 percentage now that depends from person to person some people might be able to recollect some people might not be recall not be able to recollect but the important thing is that if you don't revise you are going to forget now after 10 days or 20 days you are going to forget the entire subject okay and that is not advantageous for you all right now what happens when you revise all right let us see what happens when you revise now this graph tells us what happens you try to revise and then you recall so you have forgot a little bit now during the first day what you did you did a revision so it goes up your recalling ability goes up and then again it comes down you again revise again it goes up so this is almost like this charging time of the capacitor all right it never gets discharged fully because you are continuously feeding it with the revision technique which you are using all right so make sure that you are having good material with you you study well 
okay spend some time in the morning or in the evening and do proper revision this is going to be very important all right now so the underlying concept here is the more revision the better the retention all right so remember this revision is very very important now another thing which is good is to identify a mentor now who is a mentor a mentor may be a friend a teacher or even your wonderful parents so he need not be a genius in technology all right but he is someone who will motivate you all right whom you can if you are tense you can go and talk to them and they will make you feel better who has confidence in you all right so even if you don't have a mentor it's not an issue all right some people don't have mentor but if you can have a mentor it is always a beautiful thing learning and preparing for competitive exam you will enjoy the process all right now basically whatever i have told in this lecture in this session is general idea of competitive uh, <coughs> preparation specific competitive techniques i might put up in the next lectures but here i have given an overall view of how you have to prepare for the competitive exam i have just given the broad outlook all right another thing before taking leave from all of you is that see getting through a competitive exam or clearing a government getting a government job is not the last thing in life not everybody might not get that but you have a passion inside you you have you may like something else okay you might not be good in engineering all right but you might be good in cooking all right or you might be good in drawing arts you might be a great singer all right you might have so much of talent with you ultimately all these things can be applied to all those things also so you find your passion maybe it's cooking maybe art maybe it's sports or maybe it's engineering and you follow a particular path an organized path to achieving success all right so there is nothing like if you get a government job you are going to be a king or if you clear a competitive exam you are the king the ultimate thing is following the pa following your passion and devoting your energy towards that pa passion then definitely you will be able to achieve success i thank all of you to listen listening this uh, lecture session very patiently i know there might have been little hiccups from my side also while presenting this but uh, this is what i had to tell to all of you so i wish all of you a great career and you keep rocking you keep putting your best effort and definitely if you strive for excellence success will definitely come with you all right now that i had copied from three idiots <laughs> but anyway it is a good thing to tell at this moment all right thank you for listening and i'll see you in the next lecture